Hello there, it's Mr K, the Mediocre Painter, and I've been painting miniatures for some 30 odd years, and I'm doing videos to try and help the beginner get into the wargaming hobby, because I've made mistakes, so you don't have to. So today I'm going to be talking about paint, and paint methodology in terms of how you actually go about painting miniatures, and what miniatures you should select to paint when you first begin. So, I'm going to start off with a little paint history lesson. So, when I first started in this hobby, I started with a Games Workshop paint set. It was the Monster paint set. And I started off with it because it was cheap at the time, it was on a discount. And I still have a bottle of it today. So, right here I'm holding in my hand a Bilious Green. Please note the bottle type, because that's quite important. So you can see that this is sort of a lift pot bottle type. And I've had this for 32 years, and it's still okay. So if you look after your paints, it will last a long, long time. Now, Games Workshop don't sell paint in this kind of bottle type anymore. They stopped selling this bottle type in the late 80s, early 90s, and they moved to a hexagonal type, like this guy here. We'll do some cut shots so that you can see this a bit more clearly. And then gradually they moved to these small paint pots like this. So they've gone from basically an 18 mil paint pot to a, I think it's a 12 mil pot. And the reason being is they were transitioning from a paint they actually bought in to their own paint. So originally Games Workshop paint was actually from a company called Coat de Arms. And I have some examples here. This is a Coat de Arms pot right here. And as you can see, the pot is identical to the old Games Workshop pot. And there's a reason for that. It's because it's the same paint. So one of the nice things about Coat de Arms is if you were to pick Coat de Arms as a paint that you wanted to go for, is it follows a, broadly a colour scheme that's the same as the original Citadel range because that's what the original Citadel range was based on. Now, Citadel have deviated a little bit over the time, so it's not quite the same now, but still, very, very close match. Probably important to mention price. So these small parts from Citadel are 255 each, I think, in the UK. And coat to arms, I think you can get coat to arms for a similar kind of price. If you look at places like Black Hat Miniatures sell coat to arms, as does Hassle Free Minis, similar sort of price, sort of 230, 250 a part, that kind of price. Quality wise, the coat to arms paint, I think, is better than the current Citadel paint. Current Citadel paint, I find, goes off a little easier. It's also thicker, so you have to do a bit more work to it. The coat paint, to me, is better. Now, of course, that might be personal preference because the coat paint is what I grew up on, but I prefer the coat paint. And it's certainly better value for money because you're getting an extra 50%, basically, when you actually do that. But there are other paints out there, so should you consider those as well? Well, of course, um, everybody has a different style when they come to paint, and everybody has their favourites and things like that. You'll end up, what you'll find is when you'll end up actually starting painting, you'll have go-to paints. You'll particularly like this brown, or you'll particularly like this green, just because of the way it actually paints onto the actual miniature, and things like that. You just naturally gravitate to certain types of paint like that. It's a little strange, actually, to be honest. But there are others out there. So one of the ones that you'll hear a lot about on, which is very common in the United States, is Vallejo. And what people really like about the Vallejo paints is they come in dropper bottles. And so that basically means they're forcing you to take the paint from that bottle and put it on a palette, hopefully your wet palette, so that your paint lasts and you thin your paints because thinning your paints is very important when you actually come to painting. 
But that's one of the reasons why people really like the Vallejo paints. When I was in the United States, I, I worked there for quite some time, I couldn't actually get my hands on Citadel paint and when I found out the price of it in the United States, I was, I ran away. And so I was like, well what's the alternative? And I actually bought myself a, a fairly substantial amount of Vallejo paints to actually paint, um, I think it was a Dungeons and Dragons board game set. And I didn't actually like the paints at first, at first, but I think largely because they didn't quite behave like the Citadel paints I was kind of used to and, and and things like that but actually they are a very good quality paint their coverage is good what I mean by coverage is not necessarily how long the paint will last but more how well it actually covers the miniature in terms of opacity they have good cov really good coverage on the on the Vallejo paints the dropper bottles are great and these are a little over three pounds a pot in the UK so they are a bit more expensive than the coat de arms paint but you are getting a dropper bottle and a lot of people prefer the dropper bottle so they prefer to go down that road. What I do find with the Vallejo paints is that their uh, metallics range are a little bit on the chintzy side for me and I prefer the sort of traditional metallics colours that uh, came from coat and Games Workshop Citadel range to be perfectly honest than the Vallejo um, metallics but they are very good really top-notch paint as well there is another couple of players out there as well so you might have heard of Formula P3 Privateer Press um, and this paint was selected by the great Mike Mervais one of the greatest miniature painters of all time and Actually, you'll notice that this pot is the same as the coat de arms pot, and there's a good reason for that. It's the same paint. So, Formula P3 paint that you'll find is actually the same as coat paint. Now, Formula P3 is predominantly sold in the United States. You can get it in the UK, and it is a bit more expensive. It's like four pounds a pot. It is coat de arms paint, but the colour sets are different. That does seem to be the case from what I can work out. It does appear that what Formula P3 colours are is slightly different to what you can get directly from coat here and there. Uh, so they are doing slightly different colours. So there you go. But it's basically coat de arms paint. So what I'm basically saying is paint wise, Coat de Arms, I believe, is the best value for money, but if you like the dropper bottles, go for the Vallejo. Now we move on to uh, inks, washes, shades, whatever, whatever they are called these days. In my day, you just got inks. So you really, as a beginner, you need some washes and you might need some inks. What's the difference? So. So basically, an ink is designed to go onto the miniature and form in all the crevices on the miniature to bring out the detail, but also because it's a little thicker, it will actually colour where you're painting it a little bit as well. So if you thin down inks, uh, not that significantly, but if you thin them down, then you can get a wash-like effect. And so washes are specifically designed to fall into the recesses but not colour what you're actually painting over so much. So they're designed really to bring out the details. So that's really the difference between, between the two. So washes wise, I think the best probably still are the Citadels. But as you can see, the Citadel pots are quite a bit smaller than the competition. These are actually can be quite expensive too as well they're not actually the same price as the paints often they're actually a bit more expensive with the other ranges like from Vallejo and P3 and Coats then basically their pricing is the same basically as the paint pots so now what is different is the pots that you get them in so coat inks will be in a pot like their paint the Vallejos will be in a dropper bottle and the Formula P3s surprisingly are actually in dropper bottles as well so for inks I really like 
the dropper bottles because it means you're never getting a brush in there to sully them. So um, the dropper bottles to me are really, really good. So I actually have a tendency towards dropper bottles for my washes now and that kind of means I'm gravitating more towards the Vallejo washes simply because of that. Though actually I still think the Citadel washes and inks are, are slightly better quality but there's not an awful lot to it. Now there is a new paint manufacturer in the marketplace as well and you might have heard of them and they're called Instar and I did buy some of their stuff recently and Instar basically sell these nice big bottles as you can see here's the Vallejo example against the Instar bot example and you can see it's a bigger bottle I think it's a 20 20, 20 mil rather than 18. These are about three pounds each, so good, pretty good value for money. They're a dropper bottle, which a lot of people find very, very attractive. And they also have a quite a clever lid on them as well, which means that they they're never actually accidentally going to screw off, which is actually quite nice, especially if you've got kids around and things like that. The nib on them is actually really quite small in comparison to the nib on the Vallejos as you can see which I f found a little bit surprising when I first saw it and the reason for that being smaller is actually the paint is thinner than the Vallejos and the Citadels and the coat it is definitely a thinner paint so it takes a little bit of getting used to when you first start to paint with it because you don't have to water it down quite so much and I found with it that um, the coverage isn't quite as good as the other paints that are out there. And what do I mean, as I said before, what I mean by coverage is that, you know, it's actually going on the mini and it's going solid. So the opacity is what I'm really talking about. So it's not quite as good as the others, but the bottles are really nice. You do get a bit more for your money and they do some nice colours, they do a very nice lime green actually which I really really like um, so they're, they're worth a punt, I don't think they're quite as good yet as the others from a quality perspective but they're worth a go and they also do washes as well and they and they special kind of paint called a sheen and so generally miniature paint is flat, it's a matte um, but they do something called a sheen, which is basically like a sort of satin in a traditional paint. So you get like a little sheen to it, which you know, has some uses, you know, for certain cases on models, for example. Perhaps if you're doing some gore or something like that, you might want it to just pop a little bit. So, yeah, they've got some interesting stuff. They are worth checking out. But I think from a value for money perspective, and because I'm a beginner, I don't want to spend a huge amount of money when I'm first starting. I think I would probably go down the coat the arms route because I can get what I need and I don't have to spend a lot. A lot of people will ask also as well, well what do I need you know as my basic you know paint starting set you know in terms of washes and in terms of actual paint itself and different people have different opinions on exactly how much you need or what colors you need and things like that but my advice would be is actually when you first paint your first set of miniatures is buy what you actually need don't go out and buy a bunch of paint or a big paint set where there's a load of paints in there that you may actually never use I mean I've got probably 150 160 different paints and there's a significant portion of them that I've literally never used because I bought them in a set so it's actually better to actually figure out what actually you need and buy what you actually need but if you're talking about like a basic paint set you want definitely a white you don't definitely want a black as well you definitely want a dark grey a silver a gold a red a yellow a green a blue a flesh and a pink. When you're shading uh, miniatures that have human flesh colours, a pink is really, really useful. So that I would say would cover the vast majority of things that you'll ever paint. When you're talking about washes, you're going to need uh, a black, a 
a brown, a flesh, a green and a blue. Um, a lot of people recommend a sepia and I think a sepia is a really good idea, it has all kinds of uh, uses and a lot of people rave about Agrax, Agrax Earthshade as well as being kind of an, an essential one which is kind of a sepia moving towards a, a sort of fleshy colour. And I really like and recommend an armor wash as well, which is kind of a, somewhere between a sort of black and a grey brown. It's really good for shading and washing on metallics. Black ink can be a bit thick and a bit stark. I find the armor wash is takes it back a little notch and it's really, really handy. And you will find that you will be putting washes on your metallics quite a bit. So that's what I'd say that your core sets are, but as I said, really you should buy what you actually need for what you're actually about to paint. And that's what we're gonna move on to now. Now, no doubt you've acquired some set, and you've followed my video about what you should buy to assemble your miniatures, and you've had a crack at assembling your miniature and you've got it in front of you. Hopefully you put it on your pillbox with your blue tack and you're ready to go. You like this miniature. You really like it. You know, you get like Golem and go, oh my precious. That means you are emotionally attached to that miniature. And when you're first starting as a beginner, you do not want to be painting a mini. You give an awful lot of uh, emotional attachment to or not or you really love it and the reason why is you're probably not going to paint it too well when you first start and you don't want to disappoint yourself and say oh I ruined that miniature and I really like that miniature oh it's a disaster then maybe give up the hobby what you really want to do is look out there for a squad of probably 10 minis that you're going to paint in the same way over and over again in the same way to get your skills up. If you want to improve your miniature painting as fast as possible then you need to paint the same style of miniature the same way with the same colour scheme over and over again. That's the harsh reality of it at the end of the day. Michael Jordan wasn't just magically brilliant at basketball. He sat in the gym, well stood in the gym, jumped up and down a lot, and he shot thousands and thousands of jump shots a day from the same positions over and over again. And if you want to bring up your skills in miniature painting, when you first begin, that's what you've got to do. So I was advised, go out on eBay and have a good look and you should be able to pick up a squad of 10 minis for probably less than a pound a mini each. And I was particularly focused on looking for Games Workshop minis. And the reason why I say that is, a lot of people out there will say, hey, go and buy some Reaper Bones minis uh, because they're cheap. Actually in the UK, Reaper Bones minis aren't actually always that cheap. And also a lot of the Reaper Bones minis are in normal scale not hero scale. Now Games Workshop miniatures sell their miniatures predominantly, the Lord of the Rings stuff aside, as hero scale. So what's the difference? So hero scale basically the guys have nice big thick arms and thick joints and big heads and lots of lots of pace for you to paint the eyes. So they do that because they look cooler on the battlefield and, and from photographable range but also, and whisper this very quietly, they're a lot easier to paint that way. So the reason why you want the Games Workshop hero, hero scale stuff is because basically they're easier to paint. And what you'll find when you go out on eBay and go out having a look, or what are the cheapest miniatures out there, you'll find that it's down to numerical size of army or popularity. So you'll probably find that Space Marines are readily available and relatively cheap. You will also find Imperial Guard are readily available and relatively cheap too because their armies are so numerous. 
And you'll probably also find that orcs, space orcs, are also readily available as well because again, their armies are very numerous. Now of these three, the ones I would recommend that you paint to begin with are actually the orcs. The models are bigger, they're chunkier, they're easy to paint, but also because they're an alien, there's less scrutiny from people when you actually come to look at the miniature and paint it. If you pick Imperial Guard, for example, Everybody knows what a human being looks like and what the flesh looks like and things like that. So people have a higher level of scrutiny and standard in terms of saying, hey, that was well painted or not. And it's also trickier because of that to actually paint flesh and the like well. And it's not something I would advise as a beginner that you would really want to have a go at. Marines, uh... I'm not so uh, familiar with in terms of painting, so that's another reason why I actually said I prefer the Orcs to the Marines. But you know, but the Marines can be a bit bland to paint, they're not actually that interesting a lot of the time, and the Orcs are a much more interesting model in my experience. So I'd recommend go out there, have a look on eBay, buy yourself a squad of 10 Orc boys. You should be able to pick them up for about 13 quid for 10. And often, a lot of the time, they'll be unpainted and readily already assembled for you and they just need a bit of tidying up and you can get going. So once you've actually got your, you know, your 10 orcs, what, you, what we're going to do is we're going to paint them in a batch style, right? So we're going to paint them the same way across all 10 and we're going to paint them in a batch fashion. So Henry Ford, you know, famous for basically making the motor car that was affordable for everybody and he did that first in partnership with another chap who did some studies in time and motion where they actually figured out well you know how can you you know assemble a motor car quickly and what they discovered was if you break it down into simpler steps then we can massively improve the speed at which we produce the car and we can break down what something seems to be quite complex into tasks that most anybody can do. And it's a similar thing with painting too. You break it down into steps so it becomes a lot easier to do and you repeat those steps over and over again across multiple things so you get better at it. And what you'll find is if you follow this kind of methodology, your skills will improve much faster than doing it one miniature at a time. And that's what we're interested in doing as beginners. We're interested in improving our skills as fast as possible. So the first thing to do is to have a good stare at the miniature you're gonna paint. Have a good stare at it. They're all, if they're in the same kind of squad, they're all broadly gonna be very similar. So have a good stare at it and start to think about what colors you're gonna to use to actually paint this mini. Now, you might think, oh, I've forgotten something here. I've forgotten about priming minis. Well, when you're starting out, my recommendation is prime with white. You can't go wrong with white. Colors always go well on white. They always end up looking like the color that you're putting on if you put it on white. If you use black or gray or even red, which is all quite popular as primes, then you may find that the colours when you apply them don't quite come out how you anticipated. And in my experience, white never fails you. So I would prime with white. And I will talk about priming in another video about how you go about doing it. What we're right now, what we're talking about is how do we go about the colour selection and then subsequently what steps do we take to actually paint this thing? So have a good stare at it and go, right, okay, we're gonna have to paint that. It's an orc, okay. So ask yourself a simple question. What are orcs? Well, they're green-skinned aliens. Okay, there's a clue there, they're green-skinned. So fantastic. We're gonna write that down. We're gonna paint the skin green. So there we go. So I'm gonna need a green paint. Marvelous. So what else have I got when I look at this guy that he's in front of me? 
Okay, well, I've got, looks like a leather jerkin, some leather boots. Okay, leather's kind of a brown. Probably gonna need a brown. So, leather, so I'm gonna need a brown. Okay, so what else have we got going on here? Well, he's probably got a sword or a big gun or both. Um, so, generally speaking, they're silver, aren't they? I think we can probably just get away painting it silver, can't we? Yeah, that'll work. So we're gonna need a silver. He's also got like a pauldron, a shoulder pauldron on here as well, so I'm probably gonna paint that silver too. Worth noting that down that you're gonna do that just so you keep track of things as you're going along. So what other things? Well, when you look at a miniature, you're usually drawn to a few things, okay? And even when you're a beginner, we're gonna do some detail work on these minis because we want people to see that we've made a, 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 you know, an effort. We're not gonna go crazy, but we're gonna do a few details. And we're gonna do those details where people most generally look. And people most generally look in three places when they look at a miniature. The face, the hands, and the middle. So often on Marines, that will probably mean you have to do something fancy with the chest plate. Uh, but when these kinds of orcs, for example, they've got a really cool um, skull belt buckle. So we're gonna do something with that. So those are the areas where we need to think about detail. So if we have a look at orcs, well obviously we've got some teeth going on, so we're going to need something to paint the teeth. Well, I like my dwarfs to have good dentist. Oh, sorry, my orcs to have good dentistry. So I'm just going to paint the teeth white. The other thing about the face, well, eyes. So another great thing about painting orcs is they're a little bit easier to paint because of the, on the eye front, which often is difficult because they got, I like painting them with red eyes. Some people don't, but generally speaking, red's a good one. So we're gonna, we're gonna have a red for the old eyes. If I look at this orc as well, we see we've also got some hair and there's like a skull motif as well. So, okay, I'm probably gonna need a flesh color for the skull maybe, or a bone. And then the hair, oh well, maybe I'm gonna do a little something a bit bright and stark with the hair. Maybe I'm gonna do a yellow, make it stand out. So I'll, you know, I'll do a yellow, so I'll write that down. And then finally, as I was talking about as well, you know, they've got a really cool belt buckle on these minis. You know, it's a skull, it'll be nice to pick that out when we're painting it. Um, so uh, let, let's do that, shall we? We'll pick it out. And we've already picked uh, on this particular miniature because of the headpiece, we've already picked out that we're gonna do that in a sort of bone sort of color. And so is there any other details that you might wanna pick out? Well, if you basically are gonna paint, you know, the entire sort of body, the mini and the shoes in a, a leather, you might wanna pick out the gun holster just to make it a little different. And I think probably a good idea to pick out the gun holster and paint it a gray. So we're gonna paint that a gray. So there we go, we've picked, we picked our colours that we're going to do this miniature with and um, so that's what we're going to go out to the store and buy. We're going to buy ourselves a green, a brown, a silver, a white, a red, a flesh colour, yellow and a grey. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's eight paints that we need to buy. And we're looking at about £2.50 a paint. So, you know, for £20 or thereabouts, we'll have the paints that we need to paint well, hundreds and hundreds of orcs, actually, because the paint will last a, a very, very long time. So once we've sort of sussed that out, we now need to think about, well, okay, well, what washes am I going to apply to that paint when I actually come to do the miniature? So this is where you need a little bit of experience and possibly look at some painting guides to give you a bit of advice. Generally speaking, if you were, when we're starting out and we're going to wash, um, say the gun, the gun's in silver, uh, you know, an armor wash will do just nicely. And actually, we can probably get away with a thin down black wash. So maybe because we're looking to save ourselves some money, we'll just get ourselves a black wash. Now, what about orc flesh? 
Well, I kind of like painting uh, orc flesh uh, a green, a goblin green, and then putting a green wash over the top of that flesh and then highlighting it back up again. So I think we're probably going to need a green wash. So that's a black and a green wash. Now do I need any other? I think I can probably get away with not necessarily needing anything else. But if I look at the skull and what I'm going to do with the skull on the, on the, on the headpiece on this guy and on his buckle, I'm like, ah yeah. I don't want to get something in the recesses on that skull and it needs to kind of be in tone with a skull which probably means a flesh wash is probably a good idea or a brown so maybe I need a flesh or a brown wash so there we go three washes and so happens that those three washes are some of the core washes that you should probably be owning anyway and the same goes with the colors so you've made some inroads into what you should actually have in the long run just by doing this guide but you haven't spent anywhere near the same kind of money now we're going to talk about how you actually paint this miniature what method are you going to follow and this is where looking at some Games Workshop paint guides can actually help you. So if I reach for the first strike box set, which is here, inside of this there is a paint guide for painting the Primaris from Rings, the Death Guard, and the Poxwalkers that are in this set. The instructions that they've got there for the Death Guard are pretty much the instructions that we're going to follow when we batch paint our miniatures here. So first things first, we're going to prime the miniature. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our base coats on the miniature. And actually on this example here, I've actually picked out a gold earring but I didn't recommend you selected a gold so maybe you should do it silver and once we've got the base coats done we then apply the washes so we're going to apply a green wash to the flesh I've applied a black wash here to the leather and to the weapons and also to the hair as well. I've kept it very simple so that it's easy to copy for a beginner. We have to learn to crawl out of the primordial soup first before we can run. We can't all paint like Mike McVeigh or Paul Robbins or Sam Lenz. So once we've done the washes, you can start to see that the miniature's really starting to pop a bit and it's starting to look good. We then start to look at doing some of the details. And so on this miniature, we start to see the details being picked out. So what do I mean by the details? Well, the teeth. If there's an earring, picking out the earring and the eyes. So we start to basically pick out those little details. And then finally, we're going to do some highlighting. And highlighting basically involves just bringing up the areas where the ink didn't settle as much. And in this particular case, we're not bringing up a highlighting for absolutely every part of the miniature. What we're focusing on is the things that people really have a good look at and people have a really good look at, at the face and so therefore the skin and the hands and the bits in the middle so we've done something with the skull motif on this guy and because obviously the hair is attached to the head we've done something there too but we haven't done anything with the weapons 
we haven't done anything with the pauldron or the actual leather. We haven't brought any highlights up there at all. And we've done a very simple basing with the sand. And the thing is, as your skills improve and get better, you can come back to this miniature and apply your skills to it for those other areas. But we're just interested in getting something that's pretty good to get going with that we can feel satisfied and happy with that is going to help us improve our skills. So in terms of actually doing this, what you're going to do is you're going to lay out your 10 minis and then you're going to prime them one after another and then you'll start back on the first miniature again and you'll have a good look at that miniature and go did I miss any bits and then you'll go through them and just check them all again and then once they're, you've done that you'll let the prime dry it's very important thing you must remember is you make mistakes like this when you're a beginner and I've made these mistakes so you don't have to is let the paint dry so prime one evening, come back the next evening for the next step. And then the next step is the base coating. Mm -hmm. Base coating, quite simple. You're going to apply the base coats to that miniature and you're going to do it one color at a time. Mm -hmm. So basically you'll start with usually the lighter color coming up. So on the orc, you'd start with the green on the flesh. You'd then go to the brown you then go to the silver. Okay, so after we've done the base coat on the miniatures, we're gonna do the wash step. And when we do the wash step, we follow a similar sort of principle as we did with the base coat. We're gonna do the lightest wash first. So that would be the flesh wash on the bony bits. We would then do a green wash on the flesh. And then we would do the black wash on the leather and the weapons. And in this case I've done a little black wash on the hair as well. Important to let it dry between those wash steps. Um, that's the most common mistake you'll make when you first start is not letting it dry. So make sure that it's dry um, between the wash steps. And again, you know, do it, let it dry overnight. Washes can be funny. I find as well with washes too best to let them dry natural if you try and like put it through air and things like that a lot of people will say you know have buy yourself an electric fan to dry your minis maybe don't do that so much with the washes you may not be entirely happy with how it turns out I'll, I'll do a, a video a bit later on about how you actually manage the washes so the next step after the wash step and it's all nice and dry is you're going to pick up the details and so that is the teeth make the teeth nice and white I like my Orcs with good dentistry. If it's got jewellery, we're going to pick that out and uh, pick the eyes. And it's a good idea to basically do the same thing across all your minis in one go again. Again, it's the best way to improve. So you would do the eyes across all the minis. You would then pick out the jewellery across all the minis. You would then pick out the teeth across all the minis. And that and that's basically the, the way you do it. And then we got the final step, which is the highlighting and uh, the basing. The basing could often be considered uh, to be a separate step, really, to be perfectly honest. So highlighting-wise, we're going to keep it very simple. We're just going to bring up the flesh and we're going to bring up the hair. Not going to do anything more complicated than that. And a simple way to do highlighting is to basically do the same colour as the original base colour as your highlight. So in the case of the orc flesh, basically, we're just going to highlight up with the original green that we used. And that's basically it, really. And we're just trying to bring up the areas that stick out the much where the ink hasn't settled in. That's all we're going to do. And in the case of something like, say, yellow hair or something like that, highlighting yellow, just do use a little white to just basically pick out little strands of the hair and things like that. Or we could use a dry brush technique, something like that. And I'll do more videos uh, later on where I actually show these steps in, in some more detail. But uh, I'm just trying to describe to you what the method and the process at this particular moment in time so that you understand how it actually all works. And again, this is just copying the way games work, but really recommending how you do it in the, 
in the actual guides. So that's it for today. Um, so if you liked it, then please say so. If you've got some comments, then please fire away and uh, please subscribe and I will be doing more videos in the future. That's it for today. Thank you very much. Bye.